can't wait on other people to be what you call them. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. Sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run, but I can't stop running because you're not running with me. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life won't chase it. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life won't believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know when you do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Please ask the gentleman back in front, please make the life harder on yourself. Being no pen and blade sharing is not that big concern as it is when you're sharing with the machine. And Luke is sure to both pull the sheep out and push it up in a typical machine uh, position to take the belly off. Getting the belly off the sheep with a set of blades, it is a lot harder than uh, what you might realise. Welcome to the My Creative Garage podcast. I'm your host Vanessa Kind and welcome. This is episode 16 and I will call this the Bendigo Melbourne slash Victoria episode. Um, yes, I've been down with a lot of people um, to Melbourne to the sheep and wool show. Uh, it's a huge big show and uh, it was great because I met so many of you viewers out there. Also a lot of friends on Instagram as well and I had a really, really great time. So got a lot, a lot to show you. I'll be putting a lot of videos in between this as well just to show you. Um, today is the 25th of July. It's a Tuesday in the afternoon. I've got some lovely sun streaming through here. Um, it's a beautiful winter's day. It's not too cold. Just lovely. Probably about 22 degrees so nice for winter. Um, so I'll start off with what shall we start off with? Uh, I'll start off with an FO of course. So my FO I have. I don't yeah, I think I've only got one FO today, is my Novello socks. I finished those just in time for um, Bendigo in the cashmere, nylon and merino. Cashmere, merino and nylon, MCN that is. So that's my colorway Novello and they turned out really great. It's got lots of blues and yellows in it. So that's my FO. Um, I knit these on 2.25 millimeter needles. I usually do 64 stitches on mine um, and I work from the toe up. Um, yeah, so they were nice and warm. So much warmer the cashmere. I can't believe how much warmer and they feel than just with the normal merino. Just that bit of cashmere really makes it nice and warm. Yeah, so yeah, it's one of my favorite colorways actually that I've dyed up. So that's that one there. Um, I've got quite a few things on the needles as well. I've got this one in my, I love this cactus and denim bag. Oops, should hold it closer, not further away. It's a little bit crumpled because I've got it out of my suitcase. So, I, um, when I was in Melbourne, I went to the Morrison Sun store there and um, I picked up some Regia yarn. That's it there and that's what it's going to look like. That's designed by Arnie and Carlos. 
and um, yeah so that's that German yarn and it knits up in that pattern it's so much fun I, I actually today ordered some more because they've got a sale in Morris and Sons at the moment so I ordered some more because um, I've really enjoyed this so this is them here so they're actually on the ball so that you can knit them identical they have a bit of yellow yarn to start with Oops. Yeah, they have a bit of yellow yarn to start with um, to show you know exactly where to start from. But they're meant to be knit from the cuff, cuff down, so they're specially tailored for that. So I had to work out, I had to wind a bit of the pink off to start from the top, because I am a top girl. That's the back there. So the heel actually is meant to, the stripe here was meant to end up sort of like right in the middle of the heel, but it didn't because I did toe up. But it actually ended up in a really good spot instead. I'll just show you. So if you go side on there, you can see that the heel's just starting at the bottom. Oh, that's a better way to do it. The heel starts going up there, which is quite cute. But yeah, so I've got a bit more. I thought I was finished, but I'm nearly there. You've got some more um, patterns to happen, and then it finishes with a pink cuff on the top. So I'm nearly there, because I'll show you what's left. Two little tiny bubbles. So that's all I've got left that much. So not much to go there. So that's one of my whips. So this bag I have available in my shop at the moment as well. I've got quite a few in there you would have seen. I've also um, just launched my new um, pin it, patch it or leave it range. So quite a few have bought them already. I've sold out of some of the colours. I'm going to get some more up there this week. But there are some in my shop still at the moment. And I think I've got two of these ready to make up which will be in my shop as well. So that's the cactus with the denim. That one there. Let's pop that down. Um, while I was talking about, I might as well show you now. Now this is a bit crumpled, excuse the crumpling, because this has been, I just grabbed this out of my suitcase and it is very crumpled. So this is one, this is in the aqua, this sold out very quickly. It's got lovely grey denim with the aqua bottom and also got the aqua lining inside as well. So that's, yeah, so that's really good, that one. It's my favourite colour, of course I had to keep the aqua, as you all know, I'm a mad aqua fan. And I've got all my pins on there, so as I said, you can pin it, patch it or leave it. The um, Mel from One Crafty, Mama bought one and she bought it in the um, denim and red, well, especially made it for her um, to order. And she's sewn all her patches from her travels overseas. Oh, she is about to go overseas again. But she, um, yeah, she sewed all the patches on. It looks gorgeous. Go have a look on um, One Crafty Mama. Have a look at how she's sewn her patches on. And then she's put her pins down the bottom and it really looks great. I'll show you a couple of the other colours that I have in that as well. This is the it's in plastic here. This is the pink version. It's got pink with um, the navy on top. So they're great to leave plain. As I said, you can leave it plain. You can put your pins on it or you can put patches on it. So that's the pink, hot pink. And well, fierce fuchsia, I call it. And this one here is a lovely, like a royal blue, black. That's better. It's getting a light on there. With the black denim. That's been quite popular as well. And I've done it vice versa with the blue and then the black on the bottom. So they've been really popular. Um, I've also got, so that was the, that's my garage side. This is the huge, this one's a huge size. That's my two story size. So you can imagine, you can fit, I think I worked it out, it was a dozen or more balls of yarn you can fit in this size. It's huge, it's great. Imagine all the pins and patches you could put on that. I mean, if you compare it to, here's a, whoops, I'll just grab, here's a skein of yarn there. So you can see the sizing there. So you can fit heaps in that bag, it's huge. And it's got the bright green lining in it, lime green lining. That's gorgeous, that one. So that's them there. So they're all in my shop. So um, go have a look, because there's lots in there to see. Um, also, I've got on my needles, I started this before I went um, on holidays to Melbourne, is the Fringe Shawl by Stephen West. I think I've shown that to you. I might have shown it to you before. I think there it is there. I don't know how well that's showing up, but that's the Fringe Shawl by Stephen West. Um, I've sort of stopped at the moment because I don't like the next colour I put on. This is it here. So I loved, I should put it that way. I loved the grey, the charcoal grey I dyed up there. This is in Worsted Weight, this yarn. I absolutely loved the charcoal grey. Then we've got some black there, and then we've got some gorgeous aqua there. And then I added, I actually on Instagram put up, I couldn't decide which colour to go. I had a bright pink and then I had a, um, an, um, what do you call it, uh, this colour. 
a um, can't even think of the name, sort of a tangerine color, but not a bright tangerine. Um, so I had that one, but I also had, but I didn't show it, or they, everyone decided, yes, go for this color. Um, but I also had this, and I went, oh, I might try this bright one, but I think it's just too bright now. The brightness of that is just, I'm finding it too much, so I've just got to undo that, and then I'm going to put this one on because it is much lighter. Or I do have a paler gray, so I'm going to have a look. I thought I wanted that brightness, but now I'm thinking, I think it'll be more wearable if I put it not so bright, or maybe even the gray, and then you have fringing on it, but I'm really looking forward to doing that. So um, we'll see how we go with that. And yeah, so I'm knitting these on. Um, these are my Knit Pro Zings, five millimeters fan. That's my biggest favorite needle at the moment is um, Knit Pro Zings, really love those. So that's a fringe, my first, so that's my first pattern of knitting um, by Stephen West and absolutely loved it. His patterns are great now. I know what everyone's going on about. They're just so great to read, so easy to follow, so. Yeah, I'd recommend definitely trying a Stephen West shawl. There's so many different ones they have. I want to try the um, Dotted Ray shawl. There's a lot of people that are doing Stephen West. Um, uh, someone who lives not far from me, um, the lovely Laura from uh, Lo Lo oh, can't even speak. Lola Star Creates. She's done a heap of Stephen West ones. Um, also in America, you've got Chelsea Knits. Chelsea from the podcast with her mum. She's done lots and lots and lots of Stephen West as well. So go and have a look because they've got some lovely ones on there. Um, I also, when I was in Melbourne, I went into um, some great shops over there, some yarn shops too, and um, Yarn and Co. I went into, and I found um, the Making Magazine, which I've been dying to get a copy of. So I found that and picked up some yarn um, at the show, and I've already cast on the needles. Um, well, cast it on twice now. This is actually the first part of it. This is the Open Water Shawl by Melanie Berg. So this is my first attempt and I was doing it going, it doesn't seem right. So I had to undo it, but when I was undoing it, the yarn broke. So I've kept this bit. So now we can have it as a comparison. So that's how it should look. And it's gonna have some garter stitch with it as well. So that's, now I can compare what I thought was right, but is not right. Oops, go closer. Compared, so that one there, compared to that. And. You can see on the back too, actually the back pattern is really pretty too, how it sort of curves along in your um, pearl stitches. But um, yeah, so this is a really, really exciting to knit this one. I'm really enjoying it. Again, I've got my zings. I actually got a zing set before I went away. So um, that's on my zings and that's a, I think it's three and a half millimeter actually. So that, and this yarn I should say is from Ren and Ollie. That's it there. I picked that up at the Sheep and Wool show. I will have videos of her um, on here as well as some other yarns that I saw at the show which were gorgeous. So it's beautiful. That colour is called Castor and that is a 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon and 400 metres on that one. So yeah, really lovely yarn. Um, I'll actually show you what the shawl looks like. I have gone through and marked it. Oh, it was in, it's in the issue um, number two, the making. Beautiful magazine, highly recommend this to anyone. If you wanted to get it in Australia, well, I got it at Yarn & Co. Um, I also noticed online, I ordered some magazines uh, recently in the Skein Sisters, that's a new shop that's opened up. Um, you can get a lot of magazines from them as well and beautiful yarn. So this is the pattern here. That's it there. Oops. Hopefully you can see that. So it's a gorgeous shawl, that one there. Um, so the Making Magazine, what I like about it, it's got all different things. It's even got like here, you've got sheep to colour in, which is cool. Let's pop it back there a bit. There we go, now you can see. As well as all your patterns. I'll just show you that shawl again, because I don't think I was holding it quite right for you to see. Here we go, it looks better. Um, I've earmarked a few in here now. I bought um, yarn in Bendigo Woolen Mills to make this up. Oops. 
So that is the um, stag head, head pullover by Noragon. So yeah, that's beautiful. I just love that with the deer head in the middle of the stag head. Peeking in there. <laughs> um, what else have we got? There's also, this is a lovely brioche beanie. The pattern is you've got for the child here and then on this side, uh, oops, at, sorry, adult this side, child on this side. So you can do it two colors or one color, that brioche one, which is really cool. Uh, I think I missed a page. There were some beautiful mittens in here. Oh yeah. The detail I like about it in this book too is, see that fox in there? All drawn, beautifully hand drawn. And then um, these mittens in here are gorgeous. Really like those too. They are called Wild Feather Mitts by Cecily McDonald. So yeah, so it's a, a lovely magazine. Um, that was, yeah, so that's number two. I also picked up number three there. And this issue is called Dots, so they all have a, a theme to them. And I love in this one, they've got like, I'll just put that over the recipes over. We've got recipes in here as well. This one's called Blueberry Afternoon Cake, so that would be yummy to make. Um, I love these socks, the Kanoko socks by Mary Jane Mucklestone. These are beautiful. Whoops. You can see them there too as well. The close up there. So they're lovely socks. They're on my to make list or to knit list. There's also the Awa Awa wrap. That is lovely too with the spots on it. So everything, a lot of things in this have spots in it, like those socks had spots in it. This has spots on it as well. So that was that making issue. So I'm sort of a bit all over the place in this as I um, make things and bought things along the way. So it's sort of, but it all come together in the end. Um, this is the Lane magazine. So I, I picked that up there too. So I picked up these three there. This is gorgeous um, Nordic knit life. It's got like this one too. They all have recipes in, which I love. Can't go much better than cooking and knitting and sewing in here as well. In oh the other two, um, they've got this lovely shawl in here. Birds of a feather shawl. That's by Andrea Maori. Everyone will know her from the, um, the Find Your Fade shawl. There's another picture of it there. There's also, so they have write-ups, they actually have a write-up on Andrea Maori in here and also they've got one about this Canadian designer, Felicia Lowe. I've never heard of her and I'm looking forward to read this article. She's got some beautiful knitting happening there. So they are very expensive, these magazines, but I find it well worth it. Um, I'd rather buy one of these than the magazines with all your garbage in it these days, really. This one, um, yeah, these are more worth it, and you got patterns as well. So, highly recommend this magazine. So that's the Lane Nordic Knit Life magazine and the Making. Very, very good magazines. Really highly recommend those. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I've got on my needles. Um, I'll show you what I have bought along the way um, in my travels. So um, I said I went into um, Yarn and Co. So I'll just get that out of here. My little big bag of yarn and co. Oh, this got this is yarn and co. You can't read that. And then, so I bought the magazines and I also bought because I was going to knit that open water shawl in there, but they didn't have quite enough to make it. But I really wanted some lovely red yarn and also some Quince and Co. So I bought some lovely Quince and Co. And yarn. So it's American wool. I've never had any of that, and I always hear all the podcasts overseas about how good. Quince & Co yarn is, so I purchased some. This one's called Finch, 100% American wool. And that one has 202 meters, so, and it's in the colorway Peaks Fairy. So I, um, yeah, I need a new pattern to go with this. So I'll have to have a ground if anyone can suggest it. I've got 800 meters, if anyone suggests a good um, shawl, because I really definitely want to do a shawl on this. Yeah, so I've got four of them. Oops, and there's that's a little card that's from Yarn and Co. Beautiful shop there. That's in Fitzroy, that shop. Yarn and Co. So a mother and daughter run that. I was talking to her daughter there. She was lovely. Um, yeah, so she was lovely to talk to. So there it is. It's beautiful yarn. I love that red. Gorgeous red. So that's that. 
Um, where else did we go into? I went into, actually after the Bendigo Woolen Show, the next day I went into the Bendigo Woolen Mills. I usually order quite a, this jumper actually was made out of, this is my Icelandic jumper. I've worn, I think, this before on the podcast. I'll just stand up a bit so I can see it a bit better. Whoops, that's my chair. There's the sleeves. Yeah, so that's my Icelandic jumper. Um, I actually got that from Bendigo Woolen Mills, so it was nice to actually go to the shop itself and have a look in there and, and you can great, find some great buys actually in the shop that aren't online. Um, so here is my bag. Whoops. There it is. Then you go all the meals. And the handles in front so you can't. Yeah. There we go. Got a bag full of yarn. And so I've got the yarn in it that I'm going to make that stag sweater in. This gorgeous, it's a pinky red colour. Yes, I've got a bit of a red thing at the moment. And they're massive, these balls of yarn. Here's, um, Another one. Oh, you can see the little card too. So that is, um, it hasn't actually got the meterage on this, so I'm gonna have to find out the meterage. But I think it's about 400 meters because it's a 200 gram ball. So it's an eight ply, it's actually called bright pink, but I think it's more red than pink. And it is 100% uh, super fine merino. So yeah, I've got quite a few balls of that. So as I say, I got big balls and I kinda buy So they say in that song. Um, so that's all those ones. To make up the jumper. I think I've got five all together. One, two, three, four, five. And um, I also bought this one. This one's gorgeous too. See the halo on that? It's crazy. So that's an eight ply that's called Rich Multiflex Teal. It's eight, uh, sorry, 60% alpaca, 25% uh, wool, 12% bamboo, and 3% visco. I just got two balls of this. This is a 200 gram again as well. And I love the little color fleck through it. I think I'm gonna do like a scarf or something with that. Or I was even thinking about making something for my husband with that because the color is quite nice as well. So went to the mills. I'll have, I'll have put a video up here as well to show you what it looks like inside the mills there. So yeah, so that was fun to actually go there. I actually um, went to the pottery place in Bendigo as well and I bought a yarn bowl. It is just absolutely gorgeous. So this is the gorgeous, but not drop this because I will not want to smash this. My beautiful yarn bowl. That was my special treat. So I always remember my Bendigo trip by. So I can show you, I put one of these yarn balls in. So where's one that's loose? So this is the big 200 gram ball, so that's massive. Like it fits in easily. So you can pull it through there. It's also got holes in there as well, excuse me. There's a hole in there as well, so you can, um, it's on that side, yeah. Just there, so you can put two balls in if you need to. So that's, it's huge. As you can see, I've got a, here's like one of your normal skeins. Like, it's get lost in there. <laughs> it's how small it is in there compared to your big 200 gram ball in, bowl in here. Ball, of ball, can't say bowl ball getting mixed up so yeah so that's that so pretty so that was um that was my special treat I also bought in there as well this gorgeous little bowl as well this is called they call it the Bendigo blue this color I bought um two coffee cups for my parents too to thank them for looking after them. my house while I was gone and the animals so it's a cute little one you can see the detail on the edge there I would like to get more in this actually and they've got the stamp on that side as well. So they've been there since 1858. It's the oldest pottery place in Australia. So it was really interesting to see. It was, um, I've got one, a video of the kiln too. It's huge, they're massive. There's three huge kilns inside the place, which they went out to the ceiling of the roof as well. But it was absolutely freezing there. It was very cold in Bendigo. So 
yeah but it was um amazing to see the kilns were huge like i couldn't believe how big they were i also bought i was looking around where it was this as well this is to put your um i love the stamp detail on there you can see there this is for when you're at the stove and you've got to put your spoon somewhere so it doesn't drip all over your sink to captures all the drips for when you're cooking I've always wanted one of them so I got picked that one up there it's got a nice I just like the white color in it well off white I should say so I purchased that there as well um, what else have we got here I'll move that out of the way running out of room I've actually pulled out my ironing board today and I've got all my stuff on my ironing board here so that it was easier to show and more level so I didn't have to go away from the screen but I've got so many things from Bendigo to show it's not really working I've got yarn everywhere too now but anyhow um what else have we got well seemed to run pottery kind of stage I went into Starbucks my kids were so looking forward to going to Starbucks there because we don't the one the closest one to us is over an hour away and um, I think I told you about my story last time about um, getting in there so which was hard but um, I picked up this cute mug it's quite big but I like it was just white with the imprint from Starbucks it was just a good size good coffee tea mug so I picked that one up I think my son bought that one as well you can see the logo on it there I think so I picked that one up and I also whoops seem to be going off screen today I also um, picked up some of my You Are Here collection. As you know, I've got my Sydney, Sydney one I showed you. And I've got the one that I got from Texas. And then I've got this one, the Melbourne one. So, yeah, the Melbourne one's got tram on there. It's very cute. It's got the... I don't know if you can see that in the light. It's actually a really deep sort of dirty dusty blue inside but um yeah i like it the blue and the yellow i love the tram on there it's cute okay so my my little collection's growing slowly i've got three or four now all together so had to go there i also picked up um from the lovely because melody sent me the the one from um texas the mug for the starbucks for the collection she sent me some of the lovely Tijuana tea so Tivana tea I should say I keep saying Tijuana because I think that's actually in Mexico isn't it but it's called Tivana she sent me some which was beautiful and I noticed they had it in obviously that's where she would have got it in Starbucks and I got the chai flavor tea so that was really good so I enjoyed that because I forgot to bring my I love the Earl Grey um, in the evening the French Earl Grey so I didn't have any of that left so it was nice to buy that so I could have something um, but later on in the week we did go into T2 there in Melbourne in the city and um, they were trialling out they had heaps of chai teas at the moment and they've got a new one it's called sticky honey tea chai tea sticky honey chai it's called it's actually really really feels like you've got like a bunch of lollies all stuck together in here it's really like sticky so it's got lots of honey and oh, I had it with milk oh it is just amazing I have to say it's one of my favorite ever chai ever so if you're near a tea too, definitely try this out because it's just amazing. Just oh, best ever. Not cheap either, but really good. So that's that. I also went into um, had so much fun with Madeline because she, she's into the age now that she loves all the different makeups and wanted to go to Sephora. So we went in there and I actually got a um, from the Kat Von D collection their um, tattoo eyeliner. Oh, that is the best I'm actually wearing today. And because I'm very fair eyeliner black eyeliner can look just stupid on me because i'm just fair like eyebrows eyelashes everything i'm just fair and um yeah so that one you can do really fine on so i just got a fine black line which is perfect so i'll be buying that again but i came across this new place as well it's a great place and they um look isn't the bag cute how gorgeous is that it's a, a lovely um so it's called glamouflage australia So it's an Australian product, made in Australia, made in Melbourne as well. So I love a good hand cream and just it was so pretty how the, all the packaging and everything. So that one says um, raunchy rosy. So it's very 1950s, 1940s kind of look. This fragrance is grapefruit. So it's a hand cream. I love a good hand cream. 
um, especially when you're doing all the long knitting crochet and your hands dry up. And this smells gorgeous, but the packaging is just so cute. I love the packaging. Yeah. So I got some hand cream and also um, we we're looking at the lip balms as well. And um, there's this peachy one we got, which I got and oh, I could just eat it. It's just divine. I wish you could smell this. That's it there. And it's called, uh, what's it called? Magical Mary lip balm. And, oh, I wish you could smell that. That's it in there. Not that's going to show you much. But um, yeah, no, I was just, yeah, so it's made in Melbourne, Australian product. They had lots of gorgeous products, so um, definitely go in there and check it out if you're in Melbourne or if you can see it online, just definitely have a look. Oops, I'll just leave a bit more light in because we're getting a bit darkish here now. Um, so that's that. I have some more yarn. I know I have some more yarn. I'm trying to think. Oh, yes. So at the show, excuse me, let me drop some down here. Oops. I can't get to it. Oh, did get to it. Fell all the way down. Ooh, doing a workout. Getting hot. Um, no tea today. It's too hot now. It's not that hot, but it's just a bit hot because the sun's coming in. And I've got a jumper on. But, yeah. I picked up... Um, Here's the card here. It's Nunabar. They were at the show. I did video some of their yarn at the stand there. So I picked up two skeins of yarn from them. Really pretty, you would have seen. I think I posted it on Insta, you would have seen. This is the DK weight. And the color is Sherbet. And the other one is White Gum Wool in the color Dove. I didn't realize, yeah, so the White Gum Wool. So they are. 8 ply, 236 meters. Just this white gum wool. Okay, so it's, um, it doesn't say percentage. Interesting, but they're 100 gram skeins. So that's your nice pale gray. And this one's got your pink and your whites and colors on it. So that's that, so I picked those two up. I think that's, oh yeah, and I, I'll, the socks that I was knitting, so the Regia socks, I also picked up some more Regia yarn, this one here. So it's got a stripe up as well. So it's pretty too. So I picked that up. Yeah, so that's a four ply. And that is your German yarn too. Just trying to see if it says, oh yeah, so it's number 04898. That one because I don't have the color numbers they just got the numbers on those in the Reggie yarn so that's that one I also have been test knitting a pattern for um, Jackie from um, Intabo yarns and um, I'll just get a little sample here it's actually it's a gorgeous pattern I saw her stitching it away quite a lot a few months ago and I was saying oh I love that pattern you should write it up so she did and she asked me to test knit it and if you can see here I've just done that got all my ends hanging off in the four ply, so that was my first two squares I did. So it's like a seed stitch square. So it's like I might have square instead of knitted. This one is crocheted, but it, um, you know, I really enjoyed doing that. So that's it. And I just tested it out in the four ply because I knew I wanted to do it in a blanket or a pillow in um, thicker yarn, which is the yarn behind me. I dyed that up especially for it. And so I've started, I've got six squares on it now. So it's all speckled because it's meant to be a speckled seed stitch blanket with mitered corners so it's turned out really well so I've got your green your gold, your yellow, orange, blue pink and purple so yeah I've actually tied my ends in so that was very good as she goes which one was my first one that one there so actually that's the right side there that was my first one the blue one I did pink purple and so on so she'll be releasing that soon so keep your eye out for that so it's great for all your speckled yarn. Um, yeah, so this is actually a um, worsted weight, this one that I dyed up. It's yeah, your 10 ply yarn that I dyed up for that. Um, trying to think if I forgot something. Oh, I did. I um, also went into the Unwind Craft Cafe, which a lot of you know that I dye up yarn for her in her special colorway, the Romance colorway. And um, yeah, so I went in and um, she just ran out of the romance. I had to quickly dye some before I left. So I was up till two in the morning dyeing yarn. 
to get it there to her when I went and visit. So we had lovely um, morning tea there in the cafe. I will pop a video up of that as well so you can see my yarn in store there. And um, yes, yeah, so we've got the Unwind um, Romance and Unwind Dreamy, it's called the other one. And this is, this is it here. I've got one of this one. This one's in the speckled with the sparkle. It's a gorgeous color. So I think she's still got some in stock of this color. This is not the romance, as I said. This is the other color. So if you're in there, go and have a look at the Unwind Craft Cafe in Melbourne, in East Keylor. She is. Best scones ever there. That's a, so definitely check it out and you can get some of it my yarn there. Um, I also dyed up this week. I've been dyeing up quite a few. I've got a lovely new range of yarns that are coming out soon. I'll do that on my next podcast. I just haven't had time to um, package it all up and that yet. It, um, I finished it before, a few weeks before we actually went away to Melbourne, but I just haven't had a chance to finish winding it all up because it's going to be a special kit thing. So you just have to wait and see, but it's really nice. But in the meantime, when I got back from Melbourne, I had the urge to dye a little bit and try some new colors. So. This is my new colour which I adore. It's called Mermaid Border. So it's gorgeous blues, pinks and a bit of purple. Mm, a yeah, tiny bit of purple, it's more the blues with the pink. So it's really pretty to be my new favourite. I'd love to knit a jumper in that. Definitely want to knit a jumper in that. That's in the four ply that one so that will be in my shop um, probably at the end of the week. That one there. I also did this new colour too. I haven't named it yet, that's how new it is. It's gorgeous blues with some rainbowy colours at the end, some speckles. So basically it's going to knit up blue with some little coloured speckles of green, orange and pink in it. You can see it there. You can see the sun coming in too. Whoops. Put it that way because the sun's shining on the bottom of that. That turned out lovely, so that's got the Stellina in it too, that's a four ply fingering weight as well. So I'm actually gonna, I'll need a little sample up so people can see what it actually looks like because it's gonna be gorgeous, that one. I've got a big feeling, that one. So that's that one there. Um, is that everything? I think that's, I'll be just looking around to see what I've got all here that I've shown it all to you. I also, oh, I did find something else. Where's the card gone? Okay. Trump Candy Apple, Penny Apple Lane it's called. Again, I'll have a video of that up as well. I love on the back it's got colourways, so you can write on the back, it's a little card, you can write the colourways you like probably on there, or maybe for her to write, mm, don't know if it's for her to write on or whether it's for you to write what colours you like on there, but anyway, I bought my first, whoops, and I'm tangled up, sock link, or she calls it a, what does she call it, a rainbow road wrap, and that's in the colourway sherbet, so it's got lots of um, blues, I'll show that, blue, green and yellow almost in it. I was gonna go for the rainbow color one, but I thought, no, this is pretty. It's me. It's got your yeah, aqua and greens in it, and it's got that sparkle in it as well. Especially if I held it in that, where's that sunlight? Now I want the sunlight. Now I can't catch it. There we go. You might that might show the sparkle, and I don't know anymore. I might blow it out. So that's um, candy apple lane. So that's my first sock blank. I've actually got some to dye up myself, so I'm gonna do a bit of painting and fun with that when I get a chance. Um, for my shop, so I'm looking forward to doing that as well. So that's that one there. 
Um, and also, oh, I had such a great night. Um, the day of the Bendigo wool show, after I went to that, I went to um, the Shallow Hotel from Peter from Dingo Dye Works. Hi, Peter. She um, organized a lovely night for everyone to get together and um, get to squish her yarn as well. She brought some yarn in that you could buy as well. But it was just to meet up everyone. It was a meet and greet, sit and knit. Didn't do any knitting at all because it was too busy trying to chat to everyone and meet up with everyone. And I met up with the lovely Hannah from um, Rosehip. Rosehip Island. That's okay, but she's um, Rosehip Chick, I think. On did take some notes to make sure I got it right too. Rosehip Chick on Instagram. Rosehip Chick. Chick. I keep saying Chick. Chick. Um, that's her card, and she gave me this gorgeous little mini skein. And it's called Ski Trip. Actually, I meant to have a look because I would like to get a big skein of this. It's gorgeous colours. It's got little specks of blues in it and all different colours. So that's really pretty. So that's that one from her. Um, yeah, I met so many people that night. It was great. And at the show, I met Deanne from Addie Day Designs. Um, also, Shara from Shara Maid came up to me and uh, had a good chat to me as well, which is lovely. Hi, Shara's mum, because she apparently watches my podcast and loves it and is always giving Shara heaps about Vanessa did this and Vanessa did that, which was which was funny. So, hi to Shara's mum. It was nice to have a nice fan out there. So, yeah, and Shara was lovely and I hadn't discovered her yet. I think I've seen a bits and pieces from her, but I hadn't really looked at it and didn't realise she had a podcast. So. I'm trying to catch up on all the episodes and she's in um, a knitwear designer. She designed some lovely um, things. So go and have a look at Shara Maid. Um, also, who else? Julia caught up with that. Um, Julie from Little Woolly. She was there. She had a stand at the show. So it was lovely to meet Julie because I've been um, talking to her a lot on Instagram for quite a few years now. Um, Lynn Greeson, Kerry from Gypsy Latte, um, Lulabelle. Oh, so many of you too. We had great fun talking and chatting and laughing. We were in hysterics half the time. Um, there was also Laura, who I know from down here, who lives near me. Um, she had a gorgeous, I forgot what it's designed. It's the Stephen West one, that the full on like dress almost. She had that on, it was amazing. I got to try that on. So I'll try and put some pictures here of me wearing it and Laura, I think Laura wore it better though. She looks great in it. Um, I also caught up with Claire from We Love Knitting. She was at the show as well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everyone. There's, oh yeah, there's heaps there, so it was a really good time. And um, so yeah, so hopefully I might do it again next year. We'll see see how everything plans out. I was thinking of maybe having my own stand of yarn there next year, but I'll just have to find out and investigate a bit more into that. But um, other than that, I think that's it for today. I've got um, lots of footage to show you, which I will be posting here and there in between the video. Um, I should say too when we were in Bendigo so we were in the city for a week first and then we went to Bendigo for two nights and we actually stayed on a uh, merino sheep farm which you'd see in the introduction of my video of them herding up with the, um, the sheep dogs herding up the um, sheep to get them across the road and it was just amazing but yeah they had um, 1500 acres that we stayed on we stayed in a lovely little cottage there they had four and a half thousand merino sheep and it was just beautiful and amazing such a massive amount of area and space and just it was just so australian and beautiful and they had lamb they had a lamb which was called um abby and madeline just fell in love with that with her and i think abby fell in love with maddie too and she'd follow her around everywhere she'd go and feed her in the morning and at lunchtime and in the evening and um she would just yeah she'd follow madeline everywhere and she'd jump up and put her little legs up in the air together and stuff and the lady that um, that lives there, she said that he never, she never does that normally. So she was very excited. So Maddie was very upset when we had to go and leave poor Abby behind. I wish I could have brought her home in the car, but couldn't. Um, Josh also got to go out and uh, with James and herd the sheep. So he went out for a few hours and herd the sheep. That was while we went to Bendigo um, Woolen Mills and to the pottery place. So he went out there and did that for a few hours and had a ball. They both loved it. They actually both loved the actual being on the farm more than Melbourne City, believe it or not. And there was no technology stuff there, so it's amazing how the difference it can make when you're out in the country that all of a sudden they can deal with that technology, which is great, so.
and I'd love to go back there again. It was just, it was lovely, even though it was freezing cold. The actual morning we left, we got up early to leave and the car was frosted over. They had a big frost, so was, I've never, we've never had to do that before in my life because being at the coast here, it um, doesn't get that cold. We don't get snow or we don't get frost generally. And um, yeah, so we had to get the warm, we didn't, haven't done it before, so you have to get the warm water to put on the windscreen to get it off and then it refroze again because I think it was minus four that morning, so it was quite cold, so it's cold for us because probably the lowest we get at night normally would be, I don't know, down to five, seven in the winter and the really coldest of winter, it doesn't get that cold here. So um, yeah, so we had a lovely time there and um, yeah so i think that's all i've got to um, share with you at the moment but i had a great time and um if you need to get in contact with me you can contact me always the best way is to um, direct message me on instagram i'm also on um uh, my email is vanessa kind at bigpond.com there is also uh oh, also if you enjoyed my podcast please subscribe down below and and like if you like this episode please like it that does get help me to know that you are liking what I'm doing or if, if you have any changes you think I need to do, let me know. Um, yeah, or what I could, if there's something you'd like to ask me, I've never done that before actually. If you need to ask me something, um, uh, write a message down below, ask me a question that you might, might like to hear on the next podcast. I should also say, um, I did draw and I did announce on Instagram the winner for my yarn was Oz, um, Ozzy Maria. She won that, um, got to pick your favorite um, color yarn of mine and she um, picked the at the lake one that was the blue the oranges and yellows and she's always knit a pair of socks up in that so um, I must see if I can put, pop the photo up there that as well so yeah so it was great chatting to you all um, I hope you all have a great week well, we're into Tuesday already so yeah uh, just at the beginning of the week so all have a great week so don't forget to do I have a hook I think no I don't have a hook but I can stitch do you have some knitting needles well there's one another knit or hook on See you later. Bye. Thanks for watching.